Welcome to All Techies. I'm Pankaj Rai and in this series of Jetpack Compose Zero to Hero Crash Course, today I'm going to talk about the Observe Pattern. Well, Observe Pattern is really an important concept for Jetpack Compose because for recomposition, it depends on that. Let's check this out. What is Observe Pattern and how could we use it in Jetpack Compose? For that, let's create a composable. The person details is a composable which have the information about the person. Now let me have an object. This username object is of type string. So far it do not have any observable capability. That means if I have a text composable then showing this object is as same as writing an empty string here so it's just a double quote because so far it do not have any observable capability that means even if I change the content of this object I'll not get any callback or any sort of indication that the value for this object changed because it's just an ordinary object so to transform this ordinary string object to the observable based string object, what I need to do is that I need to use mutable state of. Here I could provide the default value. Now one thing is that if I directly say object equals to mutable state of then one of the major concern here is that as the value of this object changes this composable will recompose itself that means this block will get re-executed once again so again think of the same case that I have used the name now I'm saying XYZ now if this has to happen then what it means is that initially have username with the default empty value show empty content to UI then change this username content with XYZ but as this happens what will happen now because this function will get recomposed username which was having the value XYZ will again get the default value of empty string eventually on text instead of XYZ will again see the empty string that's all because this part is getting executed once again. That is not something that we want. What we need is that with an observable capability, once this function gets executed, then do not reinitialize the value once again. That means do not call mutable state of again and again during recomposition. So for that, what we could do is that instead of directly saying equal to mutable state of we could say equal to remember and inside remember we could write mutable state of well for remember you could think of positional memoization which works on a concept of if you have a function which accepts parameter then if the value of those parameters is not changing then it's an obvious case that the output that you're going to get from the function that will also remain same. It works in a similar fashion. As the parameter of this remember is not changing because we are not giving any value here. So during recomposition also it's not going to re-execute this lambda part. That means whatever value that you have got which is nothing but an empty string initially it will initialize with the empty string and next time onward it will not execute mutable state of that means now if you set a value as XYZ then this text will show XYZ because here you have the initial value of empty this block will get executed only for the first time when you call this composable now you're showing the empty content on text afterward you are changing the content of username with XYZ during this time 
a recomposition will happen. That means this block will get executed once again. But because we have put this inside remember block, so instead of executing this part, it will directly come and execute this particular part where we are reading the value of username that we have set as XYZ. Now by putting mutable state of inside remember block, we have solved the problem of reinitializing with the default value. Okay, so we have a shorthand notation too. Instead of calling dot value all the time, like here I'm reading it, so I need to say username dot value. Here when I'm setting it again, username dot value. So to avoid dot value, we could use Kotlin delegate. For that, we could eliminate writing equal to, and instead of this, we could say by. Now, on this object itself, you could directly read or write. Whenever the value of this object changes, then the function will recompose. All those composables who are using this object will also get recomposed. Like for example, this text, this has to get recomposed because it's reading this value. Okay, so that was about using the observer pattern. Now let's see this in action. So instead of text, let me have this as outline text field. For value, let's say this as username and on value changed. Here we'll say username equals to it. What it means is that for the editable field, which is nothing but the outline text field, show the value of username. And as the user is entering the value, that means any character is entered for this outline text field, set that content back to username. As we are updating the username value, that means recomposition will happen and then we'll see the updated content on the text field. Let's see this. Okay, so here I have the outline text field. Now if I write any content, then I could see it on UI all because the value is observed. And as the value of this object is changing, we are setting it back to the outline text field. Well, to make it more clear, let me add a text composable. So we'll add a column so that one could come below the other. And we'll have a text composable on top of this outline text field. Let this text also read the username object. Now what will happen in this case? So the obvious case is that as we change the outline text field content because this username is read in the outline text field also in text composable we'll see the content getting updated at both the places simultaneously. Okay, now let's check this out. Let me see again, ABC. And here you could see that as I'm changing the content of this outline text field, the value for text composable is also changing. That's all because of this mutable state of object. Okay, so that's it for this video where I've talked about this observer concept. Now in the next video, we'll see about how we can set an observer on a mutable state flow object because in next tutorial we are going to see MVVM pattern where we will set the content on UI reading from view model which will have the mutable state flow object. That mutable state flow object will get value from the wrapper. So for that stay tuned and if you have liked this video then please do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so as to get the videos and the notification for the upcoming topics. Thank you and stay tuned.